Dun 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 Welcome to another Getting Projects Done. We are going to continue our work on Indastra. Indrasta? Indrasta? Anyway, the name I hate pronouncing. <laughs> last week, or last episode, we uh, finished, at least mostly finished, the wings. They are pretty much where I want. I took some time after that last stream to uh, do just a slight dry brush on the uh, little feathers on the back side here. You can kind of see how some of them have a bit of an edge. Uh, I'm mostly happy with it, although I did bungle up uh, a couple brush strokes and I end up leaving like a couple streaks, but otherwise uh, I'm okay with how that looks. That is pretty much how I wanted that to go. You can kind of see along the edges, yeah, you can see along there in the dark area. You can see how you can see that edge. That's because of the, uh, I used uh, white alchemy. But otherwise, yeah. So we are pretty close to finishing this model, believe it or not. And today I think we're gonna work on her base. I think we're gonna get that water all taken care of. And yeah, I mean, like there's, there's still some other little, um, you know, details to take care of uh, if we have time today I think we will but otherwise yeah I want to get this water finished I also have to finish off some of these stones I didn't like you remember I did a dry brush on these well I didn't do that on these stones and so they kind of need a bit of attention but otherwise yeah we are going to uh, put some water down and for that I am going to use uh, just paint I think and probably just some I don't know some mediums I don't know we'll figure it out we'll figure it out we will figure it out so to get that color happening on the water I'm not 100% sure how what color I want to go with because I don't want to use a blue because a blue just does not give the right impression and I don't want to um, go too harsh a green or even a dark brown but I do want it to have like this this swampy like look to it and so I'm still not a hundred percent sure which way I want to go with that I'm thinking I'm thinking uh, to get things started let's uh, let's bust out do I have it handy? I do not. I'm gonna bust out some uh, Agrax Earthshade, uh, the regular matte variety. I'm gonna apply that on top of the, uh, what is that, Sterling Mud. We're gonna apply that on top of the Sterling Mud just to deepen up the color a bit. And uh, so that when we do get to, you know, finishing off highlights on the mud and everything like that, it should look okay. I'm just gonna quickly use my shaker. Oh, yeah. Did I put an agitator in this? I don't remember if I put an agitator in this. But anyway, it's thoroughly mixed. Um, should we pull the camera in closer, maybe? Yeah, you know what? We probably will. Well, let's... We're gonna go for a little bit of a ride here, folks. So I'm just gonna move this little light over here. Okay, hang on to your butts. We're moving. Do, 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 do. Uh, let's go somewhere around there-ish. Yeah, that's all right. And let's get this in there. Out of my way, so it doesn't annoy me. I think that's okay. Something like that. Let's move this over here. Something like that. Let's get that out of the frame. Get that reflection out of there. Now, can we see this okay? I'm gonna adjust the focus. I know, still monkeying around. You'd think Chris would normally have this all set up beforehand, but you'd be wrong. You would be wrong. 
Chris does not plan this far ahead. Uh, somewhere around that, I think he. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that pretty clearly, right? Okay. So, I'm gonna get things started. While I think about what color I want to use for the water, or what will be water. Ah, oh, I forgot to change my my rinse water. Crap. Oh well. Not a huge issue. Not a huge issue. So this is the regular Agrax Earthshade. This finishes with a matte finish. Although if you do apply it kind of heavily, it does go a little bit satiny. Sometimes, in my experience. I'm just changing the overall value of the dirt. I'm not looking for, you know, a huge value change or change in the, in the hue, as it were. If I go quiet, it's because I'm thinking. <laughs> Using up all my brain power. So I need to get into some of these little nooks and crannies in here. What exactly is a cranny? What exactly is a cranny? I don't know. A nook? Sure, a nook, right? It almost sounds like a, um, an Inuit word, a nook. But anyway, and a cranny. I don't know what a cranny is. I would assume that's some, some old English term. <laughs> a nook and cranny. What's happening, Kim? Hopefully everything's going well with Mr. Kim. Just slapping down some Agrax Earthshade on this model. Just getting some more uh, differences in value of the ground, creating some nice irregularity something that we can take advantage of later on once we start uh, applying some sort of highlighting scheme to this. <coughs> uh, what exactly are we gonna highlight it with? I couldn't tell you at the moment. Uh, again, Chris really does not plan these things out. I just kind of go with my instincts. Uh, yeah, I don't really like sit there and plot too heavily what I'm going to do because usually whenever I end up making any kind of plan it ends up getting messed up anyway so you know I don't usually get too worked up about it all right so that was regular old Agrax Urshade there we go make sure that's closed this finishes with a matte so when this dries, it should finish pretty matte on the dirt. Again, the water. All right, let's start seriously thinking about water. We're thinking about water. Water. In a swampy area. Water. Anything from anybody. <laughs> I don't know. I... I'm leaning towards more of a a deep turquoisey greenish blue water, but deep, deep. I'm thinking basically, you know what? Let's get it ready because I think I think I know how I'm going to uh, execute this. I'm going to grab. Uh, I'm going to grab some Vallejo. Retarder medium. I'm going to grab. Uh, what were we using for green? That was Castellian green, right? Or was that. What was it? Wild flesh? No, it wasn't wild flesh. Maybe we'll use Caliban green. Caliban green and Dryad bark. And then we'll finish it off with a glaze. Yes, I think so. It sounds like we're cooking in here. We are kind of cooking, I suppose. But yeah, so I'm gonna take Dryad Bark and I'm gonna take Caliban Green. 
I'm going to wet blend those on that surface. Uh, basically what we'll do is we'll push so that it gets a lighter uh, color out towards the edges. Oh, we probably need a lighter color then, right? So let's grab uh, our favorite uh, Ushab de Bone. Let's grab Ushab de Bone. This is nice and light. I don't want it to go too bright. Uh, I'm not looking for it to like, you know, be really, really intense in color. I'm basically just gonna slap this right onto that surface. And basically I'm gonna play with it because we're gonna use a uh, retarder medium. We're gonna have plenty of time to play with the color and move it around and get some really nice swirly, misty type of things. I don't know, but that's the plan. This uh, egg rack is taking a while to dry, so I'm gonna kick it in the air, uh, hair dryer. Just to help speed this up a bit. Just a bit. I laid it kind of heavy in some in some place some places. Sorry, I just I just had my lunch before I started the stream, so I might be hiccuping. Hiccuping. Hiccuping? Hiccuping. <laughs> that word sounds funny. Hiccuping? Hiccuping, yeah. No, I swear to God, I'm not high. Might even want a bit of black. Do I have black around? I do not. Oh yeah, I got a frickin' puddle right there underneath that little leaf. You can kind of see it right in that little cattail there, at the base of the cattail. So I'm going to let this blow on the surface. Oh. But again, you can see how now it, it's finished mostly with a matte. We've got a slightly darker value there. So now we can build on that a little bit better. I was just looking for that to like fall into the recesses, get really interesting. I'll probably just simply use something like uh, dry and bark and a shoppy bone, give them a quick mix and use that as a highlight color and just dry brush that. I am thinking. Honestly, I try not to overthink these things too much. Not too worried about the backside over here because we're not really doing too much over there right now. It's really right here. Yeah, I think we'll add, um, I think we'll add a little bit of black. Do I have my black around? I do not. I've gone blacks over here. You may or may not notice, but my paint area is a little bit cleaner today. What did I hit? Oh, I'm running over stuff. Uh, all this stuff. I need a little bit more space in my office. Give the Abaddon black a mix. Did I mix the other two colors? I don't think I did. I don't think I mixed any of those colors. So we're just going to give them a quick mix. Shabby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think basically we'll use just these these uh, four colors. And we'll basically add a bit of retarder to each of these colors. Um, just so that I can play with them a little bit longer and I can mo move color around a little bit, um, you know, a little bit better. I'm thinking basically towards the edges of the water detail, it'll go lighter, but I do want to create a bit of an impression of a bit of a ripple in the water. Now that will be echoed once we put, you know, um, clear, something clear on top, you know, like a gloss varnish, maybe I might use pledge, who knows, maybe. What would be kind of fun is if I had some other little creatures I could uh, put in that water. Or even if I had like a tentacle to come out of the water. Shh. 
shit, I do have. I Honestly, I should have planned this better, actually, now that I think of it. Because I do have one of those tentacles uh, in the Necromunda uh, terrain. There's like a tentacle that's just kind of coming out of like a grate. If I'd have planned this out better, I would, I could have done that. I'm not going to do it now, but yeah. So any of you out there who want to do it, because that actually echoes the artwork that involves her. Because the artwork has a bunch of tentacles, you know, and that would echo what's going on with the artwork. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I should have planned that out better. I would have had something really interesting with little tentacles coming up. Anyway. All right. Let's take a little bit of the black. Slap it onto her palette. Uh, I'm just going to move the model over just a little bit. Make some workspace right around here-ish. Just so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. So I'm going to take a little bit of black. Might help if I give it a quick little shake. Just get it up on the lid. Go. Don't really need too much. Put a little bit on the palette. Start turning the retarder in them. Real squirt. Doesn't take much. Doesn't take much. This is actually probably quite a bit I'm adding. Uh, this is this would be more like a one-to-one. -one. And I'm just going to try and thoroughly mix this in. Yeah. <clears throat> so we'll take a little bit of black. Let's take a little bit of brown. Give it a quick shake. Throw a little bit onto the palette. There, get some medium, throw a bit of the medium on there. Some of you may wonder can you use Vallejo medium or mediums with Citadel products? And as long as they're all water based acrylics, yes, you can. Not an issue to cross pollinate um, paint lines if they are, are if they are the same kind of paint yeah it'll work just fine okay let's take some Caliban green so I'm thinking that I want the green to be really kind of predominant but not so much that it's overwhelmingly green. Yeah. Sure, we give this a nice thorough mix. I'm not too worried if any of the colors bump into each other or anything like that. They're gonna get all mixed on the palette anyway. And in fact, the more jumbled and crazy it looks, the better. For the blending anyway. And finally, we're gonna use some Ushab Tea Bone. This is gonna be just so that we can brighten up values and you know. Yeah. Go a little bit brighter. Slaps a little bit right there. Is it entirely oops shit? Is it entirely necessary to use a medium on all four colors? No. I could just as easily had uh, laid out the medium on the surface and then did the blending. But then the paint would dry out on the palette a little quicker. Whereas if I mix it into my, my palette here then I can, uh, you know, work with it a little bit longer because the paint is going to remain, you know, wet on the palette here. That's all. That's the only reason. Otherwise, yeah, I could have just simply just put a layer of the retardant on the, on the surface 
and then just simply blended the colors and you know gone about it in that fashion as well there's many ways to an end result many ways <clears throat> uh kim usually no issue with acrylic products with other acrylic products but sometimes it is an exception to that that messes stuff up yeah well i mean like not all acrylics are the same but most water-based acrylics are very close together like vallejo and citadel uh army painter and p3 you know all these water-based acrylic paint lines yeah they're all very similar and they all can work together you know yes there is some differences in um you know strength of pigment and how much body there is to the paint and yes there are things to consider but otherwise most wa water-based acrylic paints will mix with other water-based acrylic paints it's not a big issue anywho all right so let's get things started uh i'm simply gonna just yeah i'm gonna i'm just gonna use the same shade brush to just simply start scrubbing in the color uh, i think what we'll do is we'll start off by laying the green and then I'll probably lay in the brown and black. So what I'm thinking is, I want to create the impression. I think I want to create the impression of it getting shallower along this portion and more like a drop off closer. So that when somebody who's viewing this, they are seeing it get brighter over here, but staying a little bit darker closer to the viewer, giving that impression of depth right 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 so let's grab some green and let's just start slapping this in again because we have plenty of work time we have plenty of opportunity to move this color around and blend it and yeah Now, I don't want like a straight up gradient. I want it to be somewhat organic and natural. So we will simply just kind of move the paint about. A boot. Try not to hit other details and mess that up. But yeah, something along the lines of that. Now see right now that looks like a very stark green. Can you even see that properly? Let's get this light right there. I kind of wish that light was a little brighter. I suppose I could turn the gain up a bit, but then everything gets really super bright. All right, we're gonna take some of this brown. Actually, let's take a brown and a little bit of the black. Yeah, there we go. Just so we can create a visual separation here. want to na knock that saturation out but I don't want to completely kill our overall effect here but I do want the green to be present throughout the entire surface but yeah yeah that's not bad I'm just gonna throw a little bit more green over here you might not be able to see what exactly what I'm doing but you'll see the end result. I'm trying really hard not to kind of hit other areas uh, just because, you know, we spent so much time getting these areas to look pretty. But yeah. Yeah, get a little bit of that. Let's see, let's move this in towards this space. Try to be mindful of my brush strokes a little bit, just so that I don't create too much kind of um, bubbles or you know anything like that. Any of the surface irregularities. 
Again, it, I'm not looking for a perfectly smooth transition. It's okay if the transition is not smooth. I'm fine with that. there yet we're not there yet kids I almost want to create the impression that you can see like the corner of the bricks coming down I don't know how well that's gonna work out though let's grab a little bit of the Ushaki bone probably should switch to a smaller brush but who cares let's lay a little bit right there maybe a little bit right there just kind of like giving us the impression that we're getting close to the shoreline kind of thing. Maybe a little bit right there. Just like that. And you know what? I think I will turn the gain up a bit. Just so you guys can kind of see this a little bit better. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Gain. Exposure. Let's turn exposure up a bit. Oh shit, too high. Yeah, somewhere around that. I think that's fine. Alright. So really quickly here, we're just simply gonna blend this out. I clean the brush off. When doing this kind of stuff, uh, cleaning your brush off and moving the color around with clean, damp bristles helps get you a bit more uh, control and allows you to do a little bit more with the feathering. Like for example here, I'll clean this off. I want to make sure that I take like as much moisture out of the bristles as possible just because you don't want to be introducing um, any uh, water or e extra water so you can see the brush is pretty darn clean and dry and then just really fast we'll just go through and just go right there we'll push the color back this way Something that looks a little bit like that. Does that feel like it's got some depth to it now? It's pretty straightforward, right? <coughs> I do want a little bit more green in it though. But I also want to push a little darker towards like the stone here. So a little bit there. I will end up messing up some of my earlier blends, but that's fine. Not too concerned about it. Yeah, it's starting to look like a murky little puddle, ain't it? Starting to? Starting to, anyway. All right. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of Ushabi bone again. I'm going to lay a little bit heavier over here, like so. 
basically trying to follow the perimeter of the little water that we've established. We'll reestablish this one over here just a bit, and then the big one right by the stone. We'll reestablish this as well. Yeah, something like that. Then we'll probably come in with straight pure black once we fix up those edges there. Because I think what I'll do is I'll create like a kind of like a bit of a ripple on that surface. We can probably do that with a smaller brush and just take these little chunks and divide them in half and then blend them out, but I'll do them one at a time. Just like so. Yeah, see, I've got a little too much water in my brush right now, so I'm actually pulling at perfectly good paint and it's messing up my effect. <clears throat> I'm gonna grab just a bit of green here. forward. I do want a little bit. Oh, shoot. I need some of the stone. Blend this back out. Yeah, there we go. That's okay. Again, any irregularities just make it look all the more like water, right? So let's blend this side out. That. Too intense now. I'm going to take a little bit of green into my brush and just push this color back just a bit. Just like that. I'm going to come back in with some brown green. black and again with this kind of blending process this wet on wet you know you will end up kind of going back and forth nothing wrong with that it's not like it's got to be done the right way the first time if you can achieve it on your first try well then great but yeah don't lose hope if it doesn't turn out the way you want the first try Throw in some more black over here. We'll blend this black out. Let's get a fair amount there. Let's really push this color around. So I just laid some more black down just behind the rock. Just to give us some visual interest. And we'll blend this out. My, the hairs on my brush are kind of all over the place. <laughs> it's okay though, that's what this brush is for. That's the job of the brush. Yeah, can grab some green and brown. Yeah, there we go. It's a little too light, but it's okay. We can work with it. It's okay, we can rebuild it. We have the technology.
this out. Just like so. Yeah. There we go. It has the impression of like a shadow there. And that's fine. I'm not super crazy about this kind of uniform edge brightness on that. But that's okay as well, I suppose. Uh, I do want more intensity though here. Yeah. Again, once you have like more time to like fiddle with the color, you know, this becomes, you know, such a fun thing to do. It allows you to get used to how color interplays with each other. Kim, I'm drawing a space wolf shoulder pad, airbrush stencil, and I suck at drawing. <laughs> yeah, that can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, just take your time. Don't be in a rush. a little better right there we have like this little lip of green up on some of the brown areas I'm not too concerned about that because we can always kind of just push you know the the, uh, the base color brown back over on top and then redo like you know uh, egg rex earth shade on it or whatever I don't know what do you guys think of that uh, how does that look does that look all right? I think it looks okay. It is a little intense over here, but that's that's all right. No, it's not all right. I'm gonna go in with some green. <laughs> I want to kill it right around here. I don't. I don't want too much brightness there. So I'm coming in with some green. We're gonna murder the brightness kill some of that edge right there yeah something like that I'm just gonna blend that out yeah see how it looks a little bit more refined now it's not as hilarious looking and we'll just feather this out like so there we go bit of a stippling action as well can help with some of these blends just to create some irregularity on the surface because you know you don't really want it to you know feel you know too smooth a blend especially for water and I mean like this is supposed to be kind of like a you know I don't know a deep puddle right and so that's what we've created there is a deep puddle uh <laughs> Kim says, yeah, I look good. I would also keep the light parts just at the end. Yeah. Well, I only wanted it to be this side of the puddle to be bright. I wanted this side to be darker. Just because when you're looking at it more of a kind of a how you would view it in person kind of thing. That way this feels like it's in shadow and it's darker and deeper. Versus this edge over here where you can see a bit more of, you know, a bit more of the, the depth I think that's okay. I don't think we really need to add any waves. I think it looking more still is a little bit more creepy. Not that I'm really looking for creepy, just, you know, yeah. All right, I'm gonna take a little bit of dried bark and clean up these edges. The dried bark I'm using is the same stuff that is got uh, re retardant in it. That's fine, a thin layer. And this will all quickly disappear anyway. Like that. Like that. I 
I suppose we could have even blended the base a little bit more. There, see how it looks a little bit neater now? The edges are clearly defined. The water. Yeah, it's fun, eh? It's fun. And fun is fun. As Chris is fond of saying. And in fact, when we get to the highlighting process, we can actually put a little bit more brightness here so that that dark area feels even deeper. It's Think of it like um, how you do uh, chipped weathering on armor. You know when you like stipple a mid-tone in or a dark color on top of the armor and then you highlight the underside and shade the upper portion? It's kind of like that. So if that if that helps anybody in how like you know how I'm approaching this, if that makes it clearer, I suppose. Yeah. Got a little bit more. Let's get this side. Try to be neat. Try to be neat. Okay, I think that's it, that's the water. Now it might not really show up on camera here, but there are, you can see a bit of the brown swirling around in there. Uh, I don't know if it shows up on camera at all, but there is brown values moving around inside that green as well. Just kind of helping with depth and murkiness. So now I'm gonna take the hair dryer and I'm gonna try and speed this up a bit. It will speed up. Typically I find when using um, Vallejo's uh, retardant that once added to the paint and you start working with it in a thinned out consistency, it really it gives you more like probably 10 to 15 minutes dry time. 10 to 15 minutes to play with the color before it sets. So that's actually pretty darn good. I'm gonna hit this with the hairdryer for a bit, help this along. This should finish nice and matte. And as long as you don't lay the paint down too heavily, it, it, it should dry just fine. Also, the other thing is, is that when using this stuff, it seems like it adds volume to the body. It makes it more like a, a heavy body paint. But with Citadel colors, once it dries and reduces down, it's perfectly flat. It doesn't add you know, that doesn't make the paint any thicker. Like once it dries, it it's flat. As flat as GW normally dries. Unless of course you just cake the paint on and then, yeah, there's not much you can do. <laughs> You've already caked the paint on. I'm sorry. But you messed it up. You had one job. This is the boring part of the video, people, where I use a hair dryer to speed up the drying process of paint. I know it's exciting stuff, I know. Some of the black I laid in there is kind of heavy. Yeah, so I was thinking of something like Turdon Turquoise or Leviathan Blue. Thinned out, just a quick little glaze over the water, just to push a little bit of blue. That's what I'm thinking. Hey, 
think we're pretty much done with that. So there we go. That is the water on the base. Looks okay. No? We're not, we're not going for ultra realism here. If I was going for ultra realism, I mean, I'd w I would have painted like the reflections up from the water reflecting upwards. If we were really shooting for the stars, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not that worried about it. What was I going to do? Oh, I was going to take uh, Pterodon Turquoise or Leviathan Blue. Pterodon Turquoise. Where is it at? Where be my Pterodon? There it is. Yeah, so we're going to grab some Pterodon Turquoise. I'll throw this in there. I just throw it right on top. This is a big heavy gob of it. Now I'm going to use some contrast medium, thin it down. I'm only looking for a slight value change. But if I could also create some more irregularities in the surface, all the better. Giving my contrast a shake. Because I can and should. And I can't tell if that's shook now. Can I see through it? Can I? Yeah, I can. Now let's give it another shot. I can see some, some darker color. So with this project nearing completion, what should we move on to next? What? Whatever can we move on to? Let's move this light just a little bit. There we go. Something like that. What should we move on to next? I have an idea, but I'm not sure anybody wants to do it. I'll grab some right there. Yeah, this is a nice color. I like this color. Pterodon turquoise. I I dig this color. I'm gonna use two drops. One, two. <clears throat> Since the contrast paints came out, man, I go through medium. <laughs> go through medium like mad. Like mad. Alright. Now, this isn't shifting all the way to a blue, but it's got that hint. It's turquoise, right? So, yeah. Let's see here. Let's go. Yeah, we're gonna have to feather that out. Have to feather that, holy commodes. I wasn't expecting it to be that saturated. I was wrong. I was wrong. Unless, of course, the surface is not dry yet. Thought it was dry. No, that's okay. I think it's just the way it looks. Yeah, I'm not seeing any paint building up. For a second, I thought I was um, reactivating the, the the paint that had retardant in it, but no. And feather that off. A little bit more deeper color over here. Just play with this. We'll stick with this for a sec. Stay with it. Stay with it. I'm just kind of stippling the color around. I'm just building up saturation. Because I don't want the shadows to feel completely black. And with the pterodon turquoise, it's it's really kind of pushing that color. And I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Yeah. Let's 
really quite hilarious. Oh, that changed the overall vibe of the water. It knocked the highlights down a bit, but that's fine. Because I really didn't want those to be like, you know, glowing edges or anything like that. So, but yeah. And it doesn't feel like it's just simply a brown green mixture. There's all sorts of little colors and variation going on. If I was really clever, I would have plotted this out better. If I was really clever, of which I'm not. Time to hit it with the hair dryer. We can see her wings moving. I'm pretty sure that's dry. Just contrast has like a little bit of a sheen when it dries, so you can kind of see where I laid that contrast down. I also did a little bit of stippling just to create some visual interest there. And just try, try and push those values, saturation. Just so that because the black tends to kind of like, you know, obviously knock saturation out. So that's the whole reason for laying the contrast on top of it, even though it's really, really dark. That's okay. I am pretty okay with that. So next, let's use one of my favorite materials. I'm going to use Pledge, Future Floor Shine. I'm going to use some of this. Yes, I am. I'm going to make water effects with this. Well, not make. <clears throat> Basically, I'm going to lay the foundations for the water with this. And then if I feel like I want a little bit more interest in it, then we can use something else on top of this. So I'm just going to take a little bit. It's not going to take much. I'm just putting it into a jar at the moment <clears throat> so that we can use it. Basically, like when I airbrush with this, uh, we're going to do this in a few phases. So I got just a little bit in this jar here. I'll put the jar, I guess, right there. Take, uh, yeah. Take, <laughs> we'll continue to use our shade brush. We've done this pretty much this entire process with just the shade wash brush. We're going to take a very generous amount into the brush and then lay it on. And I think some dummy did not clean this properly. I think I can see metal flakes floating around in here. Some dummy did that. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. It'll be okay. Yeah. I should have taken care of that. I thought I did. Last painting session, I cleaned up, uh, I washed all my brushes and condition them and everything like that and I thought I took care of this but I didn't my bad there we go push this to the edges So this is the whole reason for laying um, laying like a bit of a wall around this area so that the water um, so that this effect doesn't go everywhere. I don't see metal flakes. It must be it must have been when I was touching it. Anyway, this stuff has a self-leveling quality. Uh, which basically just means that if you lay it on an even surface, it will level out. Hence, 
hence the name, self-leveling. <clears throat> Get rid of some air bubbles. Yeah. All right. I think that should be plenty good. You don't want to lay this stuff too heavily all at once. You want to build up to get a nice smooth, because basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this to a glassy like look. You can see how nice and shiny it is at the moment, but we're gonna push that further so that there's no bumps. It's gonna be perfectly smooth when we're done. To achieve that, I'm just checking to see if I can see it moving on the surface. I did lay quite a bit down. No, I think it's okay. So I'm gonna take my hair dryer and speed this dry process up. Lots of hair drying in this episode. too worried if we get some of the gloss like up on the edges so it makes it look like you know it's out of place because we can always come back over that with a, a matte finish on the paint or put a matte varnish down whatever it is we you know we can deal with it it's not a big deal see now you can see how it's just a glossy finish as it reduces down which is why you got to build this up in layers that's not any particular song I'm coming anybody wondering what is that song Chris is singing don't know he sings whatever the hell he wants I almost want to chuck a bit of the contrast paint into this to change the value and have have this kind of be a bit, I don't know, just a little bit more color depth when you're looking at this. This should be good. dry so you can see now I just adheres to the surface really closely and so basically what we're gonna do is lay another layer down I know it's it's tedious and boring but necessary and while I was doing that I should have cleared this jar <laughs> before moving on to this step again oh well I'm okay if there's like little metal flakes in it. It just adds to the visual interest. It adds to the the spectacle. I suppose something like uh, UV Cure Resin would probably work in this job as well, doing this sort of thing. I do not have that much experience playing with UV Cure Resin, so which is why I probably never go there, like as far as you know solutions for things. But you know, yeah.
Oh, it's tempting to throw some of that contrast into that. <laughs> I am kind of, I'm just kind of curious to see how well it mixes. Because you never know, that might find its way into other projects. If it actually, like, bonds well with it. Now, one thing you may or may not notice if you are ever playing with this stuff, is you'll see, I don't know, you kind of see there's a bit of a murkiness occurring. That's okay. That that just happens when you start layering this stuff up. You just got to let it dry completely, and it'll go completely clear. Yeah, you can kind of see right up in the middle of that area. It's a bit of a murkiness building up in there. That's fine. Just make sure that that's uh, as you let this stuff dry, that you uh, help that out. Just make sure you let this stuff dry before applying another layer. I know this is gra this is really entertaining, isn't it? Really not the smartest move to just touch it, but yeah. So you see, as we keep building up the layers, it gets shinier and shinier. We could just hit it with like a generous amount of art coat, but I like using Pledge just because it, it when I when I've done it, it just goes uh, like glassy smooth, which is the kind of look I'm looking for when this is done. And it really isn't a lot that I'm laying down at a time. But yeah. After this coat, I think I'm going to try and add contrast to it. If it doesn't work, then I'll just dump what the remainder is, um, just because, you know. But yeah, I think I'm going to add contrast to the uh, pledge. Let's see how well that takes, if that gives me my desired result. Oh, here we are back to the 18 again. Dun, dun, dun. Da, 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 da. 
Yeah, I know, it's probably really annoying, right? It's like, Chris, learn another freaking song, man. There's only so much space in this brain that I can store stuff. I know, this is probably like the most exciting episode, I think, of this whole series. <laughs> Watch as Chris uses a hairdryer for like half an hour of the video. See, we're starting to get to that glassy look. We're getting there, kids. We're getting there. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 You can actually start to see the reflection of the model in it. <laughs> That's fun, no? Oh, you know what would have been fun too? Like a layer of algae. Next time, kids, next time. Ugh. All right, let's see if that's dry. Is it dry? Is it safe? Oh, no, it's not. I hit it. You can see my damn fingerprint in it. Damn it. It's okay though. Not a big deal. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of the turd on turquoise. We're going to add it to our um, uh, remainder of pledge. Of course, some dummy forgot to clean this container out, so there is like little metal flakes flopping around in there. Just one little drop ought to do it. Ooh, that changed it quite a bit. Oof. Mixed right in though. Looks okay. Yeah. Looks alright. Probably added a little too much, I think. I am thinking. Yeah. But, anyway. <sighs> See where that part where I touched? See how it disappeared? So we're going to hit this with the dryer a little bit longer. Okay, so what are you guys all watching? What are you guys been watching? Anybody tuning in for Marvel What If? Today's Wednesday. A new episode should have dropped today, actually. This is the 18th of August. I enjoyed the first one. The first one, uh, What If? Captain Carter. I liked it. It was fun. I like stories that, you know play on a theme, right? Just give us a, just give us the, you know, a play on the idea. It doesn't have to be a full rendering of a story. It can just be, you know, more of a, a rough draft of the idea. And that's what it feels like. Is like it's more of like a rough draft of 
where it could go, you know? Let's see here. No, it's still kind of tacky. What the hell? What is going on? Maybe it's too much. I've never had that problem before. Maybe. Yeah, it disappears. The fingerprint disappears. Maybe it's the heat. The heat's keeping it pliable, maybe. Even just gently rush the rub, rub the brush on the surface, and I can see the brush strokes, but then they disappear. It's kind of interesting. It's kind of freaking me out. Anyway, we're adding another layer. Bloop. Yeah, I definitely should have cleaned this out. I can see little sparkles. Although it gives an interesting kind of look, but not something I intended on. You probably can't see it on camera, but yeah. You see now we're getting to a nice glassy finish. Starting to feel a bit more like a little poodle of water. I need music is what I need. What's a good music thing for for uh for you know the streaming stuff? The things? You know, the things about the things? Oh, we're 
we're getting there though. Can't help but sing that in my head. It's like I got a radio station tuned into only one channel. I know this is exciting stuff. Watch me use a hair dryer. I know. Oh, I know. That's totally got to be wet. Yeah, I can see it moving. There's like um, little metallic flakes from the chrome paint in the mixture. It actually kind of it actually kind of works for for whatever reason. It's giving almost like almost like you could see little um, thingamabobbers in the uh, in the water, like when there's like you know little plankton and stuff like that in the water. Dun, 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 dun. I know this is exciting. But this is the process, man. This is the process. I mean, we could have probably done this with, like, art coat, but the way I work with art coat, especially if I want it to be perfectly smooth and level, it would have been this, this many steps anyway. Oh, we never painted the murder squirrel. We gotta do something for that murder squirrel. What are we gonna do? Oh, what color will the murder squirrel be? Oh, whatever shall we do? You know what I realized? Not very much glue was used assembling this mod. <laughs> I pretty much just stuck it all together. It's all tension fit. That's kind of hilarious. I usually don't do that kind of thing. getting there I know it seems like a really long journey and it is but when it's all said and done like it's just such a smooth finish it's like glass I've done this many many times on quite a few models and it's one of my favorite ways 
of building up a, a smooth gloss finish. Even by airbrush. I wear up my hair dryer. All right, I don't think this is dry, but let's have a look. Screw off. Sorry, my hair dryer's attacking me. We're getting there. We're getting there. You can see it's starting to take on a lot more reflection. It's starting to look a bit more like water. Just a few moments ago, that it was starting to look do a bit of a crackle thing. I'm wondering if that's from the hair dryer. <clears throat> Might have to slow down this process a bit. this for an hour and 20 cheese louise cheese louise all right yeah i'm not bothering touching that because i know that it is still um setting but yeah that's only like two or three more passes and that'll be nice and smooth you can already see it's already starting to reflect everything so, yeah. You can even see edges of details and stuff, right? You can see the model's reflection in it. So we're getting there. We're getting there. And again, there's little metal um, f um, flakes from the uh, paint because some dum-dum forgot to properly clean this uh, container. And yeah, I'm I'm actually kind of liking what the little metal flakes are doing. It almost looks like like little bacteria or like you know the little things you find in water. You know what I mean? It just looks like little little doers floating around. I I I'm kind of digging it actually. I don't know if it's something I'll do on a regular basis. It's kind of just a happy accident. Because it doesn't always catch in the light. It's not like it's like little deliberate dots applied. As the as the light plays across the surface, some get illuminated and some don't. And so as the light plays on the surface, you can kind of see them. And it's it doesn't really show up on camera. It's something like I suppose if I really focus the camera, we probably oh man, the lights, the wings keep hitting into my lamp here. Yeah. Yeah, you don't really see it on camera here. But yeah, it's interesting. Oh, shit. Sorry. Hit the power button. Oh, man, you see how shiny chrome that is? We turn the light off. <laughs> Still see tons of, of shininess. Actually, that's kind of interesting. Might have to take some pics to see how that looks under the light.
It's interesting. Interesting. All right. Enough goofing around. Yeah, I'm sure that is still curing. Yeah. But the fun part is, is that as it's still curing, and even if you touch it, like you've seen how I, I, I touched it with my finger, and then it disappears. And that is the self-leveling quality in this material. Um, what exactly that is, I could not really tell you. But yeah, I'm sure it's probably a trade secret. <laughs> I'm sure many Bothans would die trying to get us that information. I'm, I'm kind of liking the little sparkles in there. It's giving it just a little bit more depth. As hilarious as that seems. But yeah. It's funny. It's funny. It is funny. I'm just holding it on its side so I can, if I can see, if I notice that it's moving. Of which I'm not really detecting. So while we're waiting for that, let's, you know what, let's go back a couple pages. So I don't think I need this anymore. I probably still need that. Do I need the brown? Oh, that will keep it brown. All right. I'm going to put my Caliban, or, yeah, and let's grab, what is it? No, we didn't use wall flesh. Was it Castellan Green? Yeah, it was Castellan Green and... Mechanicus standard, right? Yeah, that's what we were using. Caliban, uh, Castellian green and Mechanicus. I'm going to create my highlight color for the stones, and I'm going to work on the stones while we're waiting for that layer to dry. It, as you get thicker and thicker with the pledge, you do have to allow it to cure before applying another layer. Even though you probably still will see murkiness, that's fine, but... And in fact, actually, when you see the murkiness disappear, that's when you know that it's it's fully set. So, yeah, I'm going to use Castellian Green and Mechanicus Gray. I'm going to make my highlight color. And I'm just going to quickly um, lay this on the stones, the remainder of the stones. Really, really fast. And what do we use to highlight the, that further? That was the, um, you know what, I want to keep the air off this. I'm going to put that on top of that. Yeah, there we go. Uh, let's grab some of that Kenica Standard Gray. I think it was Ministratum Gray we added to it, right, for another highlight color, I think. So we'll just do two quick dry brushes of this color, or one dry, quick dry brush color. You know what I mean. One of these, uh, let's use a small dry brush because we don't really need it too much. Use a small dry brush. Wipe a lot of the color off.
like that to help that feel more like the other stones. A little more color. Color, color. Do these little stones back here. some um, some administratum gray brighten that up a bit uh, where is it there uh. um Kim I'm doing the shoulder pads on my McFarlane hell blaster I just cut them out of frisket film stuck them on so the next step is airbrushing the stuff cut out the stencil that is not the shoulder pad yeah no, I, I understood I, you know what, maybe that's the next project we work on after we finish this model, because I have my Hell Blaster as well, and I've, I've got some ideas on what I want to do with it, so maybe that's what we'll do next, because I'll work on my Marine. Yeah, there we go. So just add some administratum gray, just knock this color right out. And make sure we keep some of that because we can do just a little bit of deliberate edging on stuff. I'm not going to bother washing the brush, even though you can still see the green on it. I did wash it, but I mean, like, I didn't, like, typically when I, between dry brushings, I wash the brush. I'm not going to bother here. I'm not too worried about cross contamination. Get rid of a lot of the paint and very, very lightly. definition to that yeah take some of the color here uh, I'm gonna thin it down I think and just do some very deliberate little edge highlights on stuff so I'm gonna grab a nice pointy brush I just give them a quick rinse because I had them in soap uh, conditioning and soap so and yeah we'll just use a little bit of water grab a little bit of the color Quite that thin. What about that thin? Yeah. Get some of that moisture out. All I want to do is just deliberately bring some attention to some of these edges. Just like so. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, something along those lines. Something like that. Get this little bit of 
stone back here. I want to bring some attention to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This stone here. Go over there. I think that's pretty much it for the stones. I mean, we used Elysian Green to create a bit of this moss effect. I don't know if I really need it on these stones. I feel like I don't. Although it is kind of tempting to take some of this like color for the moss that we had done and use that in some places on the base to create a bit of a mossy-like feeling on the actual, um, the actual uh, ground. Yeah, I'm going to take Elysian Green. I'm going to thin it way down. Was it Elysian Green? Yeah, it was Elysian Green, right? Yeah. It was Elysian Green. Uh, Kim, sounds fun. Hellblaster. I got two more normal intercessors in the mail on the way from England. Doing one as a blood angel as a pres present for the brother. Cool. I have one of the... Uh, I have that flayed one. Thing says uh, it should show up next week. So I have uh, Artist Proof Flayed one showing up. Should be fun. Um, I don't think it should be any surprise to anybody how I'm most likely going to go about painting that. And I'll leave that at that. So we'll grab some Elysian Green. Uh, slap it over here, I suppose. Don't really need that much. Grab some Lamian Medium. Do two drops. Two. Mix that in to the desired consistency, which is around there. And I want it really, really thin, just like that. And that's where I want the color. Buttery smooth. Okay, grab this brush and let's start applying it around. Yeah, so basically all I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply it just like we did with the other time. I'm just going to put it into like the fronts of the stones and stuff so that falls into some recesses. Just like so. Maybe get it in the corners of some of these stones. Like so. Let's go around here. <laughs> yeah. Alright, oh, these stones in the back. I laid a little bit in that corner there. I'm going to feather it off just in case it leaves that abrupt transition like that. I actually kind of like how that looks. Once it dries, it should reduce down. But I actually kind of like how that looks. Like a very kind of mossiness in the recesses. Let's keep going with it. Let's see if we can ruin the model. <laughs> Let's see if we can ruin our paint job. Yeah, so I'm just going to do a little bit like that. And then... Oh, shit brushes are going everywhere and then feather that off just like so yeah just like that and I just sent a couple brushes for mine again I'm working I'm running out of workspace here Uh, 
right. Let's keep the let's keep this party rolling. Do a little bit more here. You know, and I'll just I'm just gonna keep moving the color around, just like that, just to help kind of marry some of the the look and make it feel a little bit more grounded, a little bit more natural, I suppose. right in there and because we have the color so thinned out that yeah it really shouldn't be too abrupt a look it should just give us a slight fade of which I'm kind of digging how that looks like the stone sitting on the ground like that I actually kind of like how that looks. I think we're, I think we're going to keep that and keep running with that. I'm going to grab some water. Thin this down a little bit more. That's too much paint. Especially if you kind of just scrub it around and be kind of random, it feels a little bit more natural. Know what I mean? If it's a little too heavy, well, you can always just draw it back. Yeah. Kind of like how that looks. Not gonna lie, not gonna lie. Goddamn, goddamn. Use a heavy amount in this little area here just to help hide some of these little crimes. much water there we go yeah I am digging this look it's not something I usually do but I am digging this Just add a little bit more visual interest to stuff. Just feathering it off with a really damp brush. Toying with the idea of running some of the color up the tree. Okay, it's no longer toying. I'm doing it. Just along the bottom here. Just to help some of these little visual ideas going on just like that yeah Yeah, I, I don't know about you guys, but I kind of like how that all looks. Like, see, once it dries, it, it's not quite as as intense looking. It just helps to even out the variation tone on the surface, rather than just being this harsh brown, right?
Yeah, I like that. I like it a lot. Oh, I'll use it around the skull too. Just to make the skull feel a little bit more at home. I'm liking that. I'm liking how that looks. Do a little bit right here. Yeah, a little bit more. Right there. Take the brush. Grab some water. Yeah, I like the variation in tone. It feels a lot more natural. I don't know how well that translates on the screen, but to the eye, it definitely feels a bit more realistic. Not realistic, but you know, it just helps blend all these surfaces together. Probably get a little bit more color in that area, I think. Right up there. I like how that looks. Not gonna lie. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I like that. Feels a lot more natural. There's a little bit more color right there. Yeah, right around there. Oh, for fuck.
let that be for the moment. While I pick up brushes that keep flying off my table somehow. Oh. Oh. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. Um, guess it's time for another layer of water. So we've got the stones painted. It's another layer of water. Yeah, we're almost done this. We are almost done this mall. My coffee is cold. Oh my god. All right. Do another layer of water. This should be good by now. Most part. I'm trying to get rid of some of the air bubbles, but I'm thinking now that I might want to, like, just let them happen. That way, it gives the water a bit more of a, a bit more realism. Not that the you know harsh realism is our goal here, but yeah. I'm also trying to make sure this base is nice and even. Again, because of the self-leveling quality of this, yeah. Yeah, I like the varying tones of green and the brown. That gives it kind of that mossy, mucky kind of look. I really, really like that. So it looks kind of wavy now, but as it levels out, it, it'll smooth out. You can kind of see a bit of murkiness creeping in. Like I said, that's fine. Because then once that, that dries up, that'll be fine. It dries clear. Uh, Kim, I'll bet you're doing it in darkest, most matte, unshiny metal paint you can find. Or chrome. Yeah, I'm probably going to hit it with chrome, but I'm going to make it weathered and everything like that. But I think the really fun part will be the flayed ones uh, going really kind of gory with them, right? So, yeah, that's what I'm planning. Kim, it's just a rodent left now and you're finished this piece um yeah it's a little couple odds and ends here and there i want to pick out some other little spaces that i forgot about on the model but otherwise yeah we are like i mean i didn't also dry brush the dirt yet but i'm waiting for the water to um finish and honestly like i said like this process for the water is typically what i do but i never really thought about uh, basically how long the process is when I do do it because I've never really recorded it I'm always just kind of doing it off camera kind of thing right and so it, it is kind of interesting to see how long this process actually does take me <laughs>
Am I finishing it today? I'm... I should be. Because I wouldn't mind getting started on Friday with the new project. So I'm thinking so. Yeah, you can see how it starts to smooth out over time. Also, this last layer I applied was pretty heavy. But yeah, I think I'll I'll continue working on this. What time? Holy cowboys, it's only a few minutes left of the of the stream. Yeah. I think I'm gonna try and get this done today. Try and take some pretty pictures. Do the little spinny video. This water is drying almost completely smooth now. And see in the reflection how it's very, very smooth. It honestly only needs probably like one more layer, and it'll be at the level in which I like. But yeah, I'm thinking that I think next I think next episode I think we might get started in that. He has been sitting in my to-do pile for a bit, so yeah. That's damn near done. See how shiny that is? Like I said, it takes a bit, but the end result is really, really nice. It's really, really pretty. time we at two hours we hit the two hour mark yeah oh yeah you can just kind of see just that little bit of discoloration I've never seen that before other than today but for whatever reason I think that's I think it's the dryer and then all of a sudden it comes back and goes back to smooth again so I think it's it's from the dryer why that's occurring I couldn't tell you yeah look it's already disappeared gone back to smooth yeah I'm not 100% sure why the um, pledge does that but anyway hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode I want to thank you guys for tuning in and 
yeah, I will see you guys in the next one. Big thank you to all my patrons. Without your support, this channel just would not be able to continue to do what it is that I do. What is it that I do? I don't know. But I do some stuff. So next episode, 61. Episode 61, I think we may get started on... I'm hoping to get started on Intercessor Marine. There we go. Let's, yeah, let's adjust that light. So yeah, I think we'll get started on this guy. I have plans for this. I have plans. I also have another one of these figures coming in next week, which is a Necron Flayed one. Uh, I have one of the regular Necron Warriors, but it's painted. Um, but yeah. And this weekend too is pre-orders for the band, the new Bandai one. Uh, inner, no, what is it? Gravis Armor. That's it. Uh, all these Space Marines in there. BS. <laughs> yeah. Oh, any nice. Any special chapter? Um, yeah, we're gonna do some custom work on this. We are. We're gonna actually do some custom work. Um, I'm not gonna spoil it. I'll let you uh, stew on it. I've probably talked about this kind of thing in the past. So if you've been listening to me ramble on about stuff, then you probably know what direction I'm going with this guy. Never before been done. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Alright. I'll see you guys later. Um, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Stay safe. That's it. That's all I got. Just stay safe, people. No matter what occurs, I'll find you. Dun 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 Yeah, that's really crap, I know, but what are you gonna do? I guess I could shop around for some music, I suppose, right? Just buy some? Maybe I will. Maybe I'll do that later. Ha <laughs> ha.